Um, all right, so our uh, next, uh, the next talk is given by uh, Paul, Paula Jackson from Kennesaw State University in Georgia, just up the road. Uh, and uh, she'll be talking about uh, long-term human interactions, I think, with uh, dry tropical forest. Uh, and I'll let her mention her co-authors. Hi. Um, so the talk that I'm going to be uh, given today is uh, from the work of um, Lucia, uh, Lucia Sanafre. This is part of her PhD dissertation. And originally, Juan Manuel was going to give the presentation, but uh, they bailed on me, so, <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. Um, we're going to talk about um, woody plants, uh, generalists and specialists, and using uh, functional trait analysis to try to see if we can distinguish uh, some traits between these types of plants. Um, most of the information about tropical uh, dry forests has already been given in previous uh, talks, but I'm going to just remind you a little bit about them. Um, as we know, they're characterized by a three to six month uh, dry period. Uh, with a mean annual precipitation between 400 and 1700 millimeters and a severely, um, are severely threatened by land conversion. Uh, these areas are subject to uh, quite a bit of uh, differences in uh, microclimate and environmental conditions, with young successional forests being typically very dry, sunny, and hot areas while uh, later successional forests are relatively uh, cooler and moisture, uh, have more moisture. Um, topography, however, is also an important uh, source of environmental variation, especially for the forests where we were working. And uh, previous studies have found that soil uh, water availability is quite low uh, when you look at slopes and hilltops uh, compared to uh, valleys and uh, flat areas. So one of the things that uh, we were wondering about uh, was if functional traits are also different based on succession and based on topographic position. And very few functional studies have evaluated uh, functional differentiation of second growth and old growth tropical uh, dry forest specialists or compared um, hill versus uh, flat area um, specialists. Uh, so, which functional traits may allow for a generalist species to establish and survive along the topographical uh, gradient or the successional gradient is an open question. So we were thinking um, if generalists and specialists um, uh, maybe differ in their constellation of traits and also um, given that this site, uh, there have, um, they're continuously discovering um, more archaeological sites. Uh, the, the site has been used by millennia by Mayans. So we were wondering if maybe generalists uh, do, uh, dominate across the whole successional and uh, topographic gradient. We predicted that given that um, the young successional areas and hills have these drier um, conditions, then specialists in these areas would show traits associated with drought resistance or avoidance. And in contrast, we thought that the old, gro um, old growth forest and flat area specialists would show traits associated with more mesic environments. In terms of functional uh, position, we thought, well, probably these generalists will show some type of an intermediate functional position, but also given that they are generalists, maybe they'll have traits that are more similar to young forest um, specialists, to those, those uh, species that can do well under those harsh conditions. Um, we also thought that generalists would be more abundant than specialists across all the successional um, and topographic positions. Okay. Um, the study area took place in the Yucatan Peninsula, and um, we, uh, uh, well, Lucia did most of this. <laughs> uh, 22 by 16 uh, kilometer landscape, you can see in this um, square um, over here, this is where the study took place, and used 23 uh, landscape units, each of which had 12 plots of 200 uh, square meters, and you can see that the 12 uh, uh, plots are the little uh, red dots across the 23 uh, landscape units seen in this um, aerial uh, photograph. 
Um, all woody plants with uh, DBH greater than five centimeters were tallied, and uh, there were a total of 120 species, um, 275 uh, plots. Um, of these species, uh, 65 uh, were uh, selected for, um, for analysis and for functional trait uh, measurements. Uh, we looked at 13 different uh, plant traits, and the traits are here on the left-hand side. Uh, the functional role of each trait is on the right-hand side. So we looked at minimal photosynthetic unit, leaf compoundness, leaf area, leaf petiole, leaf dry matter content, specific leaf area, leaf deciduousness, uh, leaf pollination, uh, wood specific gravity, leaf pubescence, uh, plant exudates and plant spininess. These three are, are related to herbivory defense. And we also looked at dispersal syndrome as a, a, with the functional role of biotic um, interactions and dispersal. Uh, for the sampling of the uh, branches, um, the sampling took place uh, between 6 and 11 a.m., selecting uh, branches that were sun exposed and trying to collect those that had the best looking leaves, leaves that had not been damaged uh, by herbivory or other factors. Uh, leaves were collected and placed in plastic bags with moistened um, newspaper, and those plastic bags were then uh, placed in an insulated um, container that had uh, frozen gel. And yes, we could find newspaper. Um, Okay. <laughs> uh, the traits that we looked at, um, as were mentioned before, specific leaf area, leaf area, mean photosynthetic unit, uh, leaf dry matter content, petiole length. Once the leaves were collected, and we collected uh, five leaves per plant, um, an average of uh, 10 individuals per species, with the lowest number of individuals being five. Um, uh, the leaves were uh, numbered, uh, weighed, uh, placed on a flat scanner, um, and uh, we did uh, use Photoshop to eliminate some of the shadows and to increase the contrast. And then the um, areas were uh, determined using um, image J. Uh, a wood specific gravity was obtained by uh, using a, a core borer. Um, frequently, there was a, a, um, an electric core borer that had to be used initially, and then a manual core borer. Uh, sections were separated into one centimeter. Uh, for the large, uh, uh, large trees, one centimeter sections were used, um, and a green, uh, green volume by water displacement was determined, and the samples were oven-dried uh, oven for the later determination of wood-specific gravity. We also collected samples from uh, lianas, and for the case of uh, lianas, um, a knife was used, and the sample was collected uh, to the pith of, um, of the plant. Uh, for the statistical methods, a series of different types of uh, statistics were used. A uh, multinomial uh, model uh, was used to try to separate the different uh, plant groups, the different specialists. Uh, based on estimated um, species relative abundance, as published by Chaslin in 2011. And two analyses were used on the data. The first one compared abundances of young and old plots, and the second one compared abundances of plots on flat sites and on hills. Uh, the, uh, the number of years on the flat sites, the plots of different ages, was increased because um, the data indicated that uh, there were a lot of, of, of plots that were young in uh, the flat area, so we didn't uh, restrict that to um, more than 50 years old. In order to uh, look at functional differences among groups, we used uh, Permanova based on a ma matrix of uh, dissimilarity of Euclidean distances for the 13 uh, traits that I mentioned before, and we also used a principal component analysis on these uh, 13 traits. To test whether the proportion of attributes of binary traits differed among groups, we used uh, chi-square analysis and Tucky type multiple comparison taste, um, uh, tests, and in the case of continuous traits, we used a separate ANOVA for each trait and uh, Tucky's post-hoc analysis. 
Okay, so um, I'm going to start talking about uh, some of our results. And on the left hand, we have the results for uh, the different successional uh, plots or uh, differences based on successional uh, time, time since disturbance. And on the right, we have uh, results based on topography. So uh, for succession, uh, the multinomial um, analysis uh, uh, gave us that we had 10 species that were old growth forest uh, specialists, uh, six that were young uh, secondary uh, forest specialists, 27 generalists, and 22 species were too rare um, to classify with confidence. In terms of topography, we were able to distinguish 12 species that were flat area specialists, nine species that were hill specialists, 23 generalists, and 21 that were too rare to classify uh, with uh, confidence. Uh, for uh, the principal component analysis on the 13 traits that we used, um, it, uh, we were, um, it explained 50.8% uh, of the variability, um, with a, a main component explaining, uh, with the first component explaining 28% of the variability, and distinguishing traits mainly in terms of uh, the economy of leaves and um, um, stems. Um, here in this slide, you can see that um, the letters correspond to uh, old growth, uh, secondary growth are generalists, and the forms, uh, either triangles or squared, uh, are for um, hillside specialists or flat side uh, specialists. Okay, so as I mentioned uh, before, the first component separated mainly in terms of, um, in terms of leaf and stem um, economy and separated out uh, plants that had uh, large leaves, long petioles, uh, low wood specific uh, gravity, and mainly abiotic types of dispersal, wind dispersed, um, and this one is an explosive uh, uh, disperser. And on the other hand, we had plants with, uh, with small leaf areas, um, high uh, uh, density, or, uh, and that were uh, mainly dispersed by animals, had uh, fleshy um, uh, seeds. The second uh, component separated uh, mainly in, on the basis of temperature control, and we had plants that were uh, compound and deciduous on one hand, and that um, had uh, pulvining, uh, and in terms of herbivory defense, mainly uh, had uh, spines uh, from plants that had mostly whole leaves, um, did not have a uh, pulvining, and had exudates as a form of uh, defense. There was not a striking difference between um, generalists and specialists. As, as I said before, generalists uh, are in green. Um, but some traits did, uh, did stand out to distinguish our generalist species from uh, some of the specialist species. And uh, we had things like uh, leaf uh, pulvining, uh, leaf area, uh, specific leaf area that tended to distinguish these two uh, groups. In terms of um, secondary, in terms of differences between uh, secondary, uh, secondary growth um, specialists and uh, old growth specialists, things like leaf area, leaf deciduousness and leaf uh, pulvinae seem to separate those uh, groups. And in terms of topography, uh, things that t tended to separate uh, uh, topography hillside versus uh, flat areas, uh, we had mainly leaf deciduousness and, uh, um, and um, hairy uh, leaves, leaves uh, the, um, leaves with hairs. <laughs> um, okay, so some of the things that were uh, somewhat surprising, um, I'm going to highlight some of the things uh, in these figures that were against what we had predicted. And for each one of these figures on the x-axis we have uh, generalists, old growth specialists, or secondary growth specialists. So one of the things that was uh, a, a bit uh, different from what we had thought we would find 
find was in terms of leaf area, where we had leaf area in second growth, um, uh, our second growth specialists uh, higher than um, in our old growth uh, forests. And that was opposite what we had, uh, to what we had predicted. Uh, both leaf area and specific leaf area were higher in the second growth forest. On the other hand, the minimum photosynthetic unit was lower in the second growth forest. Um, also looking at differences with uh, succession, with time since disturbance, um, this was um, to some, some extent more in line with what we had predicted. Leaf deciduousness uh, was higher in second growth forest compared to old growth forest, and there's a little bit of a mixture for uh, generalists. In terms of pollination, secondary growth forest had a lot of uh, pollination uh, present. Differences with topography were opposite what we had expected. Um, we had that, um, we thought that on the hillside we would have a lot of uh, traits that were associated to uh, conserving water, but on the hillside we had a higher abundance of evergreen uh, plants as opposed to deciduous plants. So that was different from what we thought we would find. Um, and again, here we have uh, generalists, uh, flat, uh, a flat area and hillside specialists on our um, x-axis. In terms of a leaf um, pubescent, pubescence in hillside, uh, they were mainly absent. And uh, on the uh, flat side, we have a little bit of a mixture. Uh, one of the things that we had thought we would find is that generalists would dominate or, or would be more abundant across uh, all successional um, uh, ages. And we found that to some extent here, uh, generalists are more abundant in our young and intermediate and old in flat areas. However, this was not the case for old areas on uh, the hill side. Generalists were no longer the most abundant um, uh, group. In terms of topography, um, this, uh, our predictions were not met either. Um, we thought that we would have generalists being more abundant across all, uh, uh, um, both uh, on flat sides and on hills, and uh, this uh, um, was, was uh, for the most part not the case. Uh, we did find a bit of a higher abundance in uh, flat sides. Okay, so some of the conclusions then. Um, it seems that leaf shedding or leaf deciduousness and pulvini are the main mechanisms allowing young secondary uh, forest specialists uh, to avoid um, hydraulic failure. Um, it also seems that um, old forest specialists retain their leaves and use uh, a combination of mechanisms to cope um, with drought, which I um, did not get into here. General, generalist species were highly dominant across the succession on flat sites and unexpectedly were more similar to old forest, um, old growth forest specialists. We had predicted that they were more, they would be more similar to, uh, to flat area. So one of the things that we're thinking might be going on is that hills may be, act as, uh, may be acting as reservoirs for old growth um, uh, forest specialists because uh, these are very vulnerable to local extinction due to recurrent and pervasive human disturbance on flat areas. All the flat areas have been disturbed, whereas uh, the hills are not used um, uh, that frequently. Um, so uh, we want to thank um, uh, all of these uh, institutions and people that were helpful to the study. Thank you.